Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our Santa sleigh. Santa's sleigh is in shambles, and we need to help him out, obviously. We've got plenty of time before Christmas, but I think it's pretty vital that we get this thing assembled, because he is going to need it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, actually. Not very many pieces. We kept it pretty simple, and, um, well, I think initially, my thought was that we'd be using it uh, as a little gift box, so to speak. But maybe down the road, we can fill this thing with some of our Christmas floral. Uh, either way, we're going to begin by just kind of doing some paper piecing. And we have two sides to the sleigh. Okay, so I'm going to grab these pieces here. We have our main pattern. There's going to be a little bit of gold that goes on top of that and then a little bit of silver okay so this is a pretty large flimsy piece if it makes it easier on you uh, by all means you could certainly try to do this in sections meaning maybe we'll glue half of it down depending on the type of paper you're using uh, you can see that this is pretty flimsy i can get this section down and then peel this back and uh, apply my glue and then put the, the second half on. I'm going to try it both ways and see what works better because we again we do have a lot of surface area to cover here and I want to make sure that we get enough glue on here for everything to stay in place. Now um, I'm kind of lucky right now because this paper that I'm using it's a pearlescent paper which means that it won't absorb the glue as quickly as a standard cardstock would. So I do have the opportunity, well actually I take that back, look at that, it's drying already. So we may need to do this in segments or I'm going to try to do this in one fell swoop initially. If it doesn't work we can always go in and do a little bit of painting with glue to, uh, to get the rest of this to kind of stay in place. So very carefully drop that into position. You want to try to get this right on top as accurately as you can. I think it helps to kind of have this in both your hands so you can make any little minor adjustments as needed. Okay, but that worked out nicely and we'll see how that plays out. Just press that down, spread that glue out, thin it out. We don't want it warping the paper. Okay, and you know what? That actually worked pretty well. Okay, so I think you can pull that off actually. But we're going to try, I'm going to try the other method here as well. So as I mentioned with this one, what I'll do is kind of separate this into two halves. And I'll begin applying my glue to the first half here. Right about there, we'll stop. Okay, and that glue is already kind of starting to dry. So let's get this first half in place. I mean, we're technically aligning the whole thing, but we only have glue on like half of it. Okay, and that way you can kind of see how it goes. Okay, so that's in place. Now what we can do is just peel this back and apply our glue to the second half. This little area in here may be a little tough to get to, but it's doable. And the cool thing is when you break it into halves like this, when you go to put the other half in place, the first half is already in place, so you just literally need to just drop it, let it go, and it'll find its position naturally, just like that. Okay, and that worked as well. So either way, as my my weird sixth grade um, science teacher used to say there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I'm a big fan of cats nowadays, so I'm not a big fan of that saying, but apparently that was appropriate back in the day. 
Okay, so now we're gonna put the little silver section in place. Okay. And you know what, I think because it's so flimsy, it may help just to keep it on your surface. And just try to get that glue onto as many of the little areas as possible. Do a straight line here. Oh, you can hear that wind howling. There we go. Okay, grab that. And we do want to get this centered. So there should be like an even border all the way around. I'm going to start here on the less flimsy part and get that in place and drop the rest of it into position. Just like that. And that looks good. There, very well done. Okay. All right, so that's one half complete. And that's just gonna go on the main structure once everything's all said and done. So let's grab the other half and do the same thing. This is a pretty straightforward project. You could probably get this done in about 30 minutes, which is cool because, you know, it can really give a very special, meaningful, handmade gift. Well, I guess maybe the gift won't be handmade, but the presentation will, and people will appreciate that. And I'm sure I'm going to see somebody grab maybe the poinsettias from a, a, another collection or other flowers and make a floral arrangement using this as the base. I can already see that happening, and I may try my hand at that as well, if time permits. Okay, perfect. So that came out very nice. There we go. Okay, so the two sides are done. Okay, we we'll put those off to the side for now. Um, let's create this little base. It's pretty straightforward. Um, this is just to help this thing be more sturdy. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. What we're gonna do, make sure you fold everything, obviously, at the score marks. We're gonna start with these little trapezoid shaped tabs. Okay, this will not really be visible all that much. I'm going to tuck that behind this section here, the side, and press that into place. Now we made it black so it would just kind of disappear underneath the sled, but because it's black, be careful as you're gluing because the scotch, the scotch glue tends to, um, it tends to really show <clears throat> on black if you happen to squirt it all over the place. Okay, we'll tuck that section behind as well and just proactively rub off any excess glue that might be squirting out. If it's in the cracks like that, it'll dry, you won't really see it, but once it's on the surface, it starts to kind of blemish things. Again, it's not a very important part of this because it's not going to be, I'm not going to really see it too, too much. Okay, now here on this other side, I'm gonna just do both the tabs at the same time. I think that'll work. For some reason, I've noticed that black paper tends to absorb glue at a different rate than other colors. Okay, so flip that over, line it up, press it into place, and then head over to the other side here, line it up, press it into place, like that, there we go, very simple. And now, I'm gonna fold those tabs in. We'll apply our glue to all three of these tabs. Going a little bit thicker here, because I've got a lot of surface area to work on, and I don't want it to dry prematurely, because I do want to spread it out to the very edge. There we go, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and close it up. So grab a little lid, bring it towards you, line it up with this side. Just focus on just that side, get it nice and centered, nice and flush out to the very edge, and then you can take and push the two walls in if necessary. And just kind of keep running your finger along the perimeter. And let's try to avoid any gaps between this little lid and the main structure. And as I said that, of course, I have one side with a little gap, not a problem. Grab a scrap piece of paper, 
throw a little bit of glue right on the very corner of it and just shove it right into that little gap and just paint a little extra glue right there and press and hold that down, make it nice and seamless. Okay. So we have our base done pretty straightforward as well. Next, what we're going to do, uh, there's a couple things that we can actually do here beforehand. Uh, this we're going to use as kind of a, we call it a skeleton piece. Um, and what we can do here right now is get some of these panels glued into place because they will not get in the way of the rest of the assembly. So we can throw that in there. And then we also have all of the liners inside are purple. So we can actually get all three of these glued in place. These will go later. Okay, so let's just do that. I love just kind of systematically doing things, getting rid of pieces slowly and methodically. Okay, so we do want to get this centered. Nice even border all the way around. Press that into place, like so. We'll do this side of the sleigh, the inside of the sleigh. This just makes it look nice and pretty inside. And I'm just doing my little circular motion. Okay, again, nice even border inside. If you need to give it a little nudge, that's fine. There we go. Okay. And one more. I think of the three projects in this bundle, this one's probably, this one and the angel go the quickest. The, uh, Frosty is a little bit involved, but again, I said it before, Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm not saying that Frosty is equivalent to that, but you know, unique, beautiful things take a little bit of time to put together. Okay, so our liners are in. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these two pieces, okay? And we have, well, two different lengths. You know, obviously, the longer one is going to go towards the back, the shorter one towards the front. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin by anchoring this to the bottom here, like so. Okay, so let's throw a little bit of glue onto this tab on the inside part. If you're using AC cardstock, it's on the non-textured side. Okay, and just line that up, get it centered, and press that down. You can actually do this flat. But again, make sure it's right on and centered. Just push that down. And if you kind of flare these out, the score lines on this should match up with the score lines on the main base. And that's a good indicator that you've got it lined up correctly. So just hold that in place for a moment. Okay, looks good. We can fold it back. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and attach these tabs to the outside of this piece here. Now it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but we have a panel that's going to go over this and it really does make it a lot easier to put the tabs on the outside. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here, I want to anchor this bottom tab first because I don't want there to be a gap there. So put a little bit of glue on that and then press that up against the side of this as far as it'll go and then push the tab over onto the surface like so. You can actually also just put it down on your surface and press from the inside. You can see how that tab is sitting there. Okay. And then the rest of these, we're going to use our, we're going to use our table to kind of help us here. Flare those tabs out. And then what I'm going to do is just put little dots of glue on each of these. And I think I could probably do three or four at a time. So now flip those over get them ready to touch this surface. And I'm just going to tuck them under. Let me move this out of the way so you can see better. I'm going to tuck those under and I'm pushing this way with my hand to push it up against this surface. 
And as I do that, I'm pushing down on this surface so that these two sections connect. There we go. And that just makes very quick work of this assembly. You can see how nice those tabs are going in place. And that just leaves four more little tabs. Again, just little dots will do. Okay, move this out of the way. Get them ready to make contact with this surface. And push this up against this surface here. And as you do that, press down on the inside. And there you go. That's how it should look. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. Grab that tab, get it out of the way. And I also am going to anchor this first one in place. Just a little dot of glue. Okay, fold it over and just hold it. You can also, you can put that down on your surface as well if you want. Let me try that one more time. I do like using my surface. So again, pushing it over onto the surface, but using my table. So that I can push down and really get a good press on that. There you go. So you can see that tab there. And then I'm feeling pretty confident about this. And I think you can do this too. Let's just try to get all these done. Just a little dot, 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 all the way up, fold those over, okay, and then we're going to take that, tuck it, you can see there, tucking it underneath, and work your way from the bottom up, I'm just pushing this up against this structure here, and then pushing down with my finger to help them all make contact. There you go. You can see how nice that looks. Okay, so getting there. <clears throat> Next, we're going to do the same thing with the other side. So this is going to go on like this. We're going to anchor the big tab and just make sure that we get that nice and centered. So just throw a little bit of glue right on this tab. And you can literally just pop this into place here. Let me move these tabs out of the way. Just line that up nice and centered. There you go. I'm going to lift this up and take a look at it from the other side. You can actually fold that back. And these should be pretty much flush right here. There we go. Press that down, get it to get a real good hold. There we go. And same thing is going to apply here except that it's got a little bit of a different curve going here. In, in which case, we are probably going to need to um, go a little bit slower with this because it does have more than one curve. And what I'm going to do, just to kind of loosen up the fibers on this a little bit, is I'm going to take and just kind of train this. And you can see how it kind of bent it a little bit. Okay, and then as we get up here, we can kind of train it the other way. Just loosen up those fibers a little bit. Don't need to, don't need to get crazy with it, but it would, it will definitely help. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to begin by anchoring this bottom tab first, and I think initially I want to just kind of do this slowly, one at a time here, because of the curvature of this piece. So just. Push this as far as you can up against the surface. I've got a finger inside there so I can kind of sandwich it. Press from both sides, okay? And then we'll grab the next tab. And I think the other side will go a lot quicker because we'll already have, already have it sort of aligned on one side. Okay, so doing the next tab here. And you can also, if you want, you can certainly do it this way. Okay, 
I'm going to grab and I'm going to put glue on these next two. And just like we did with the other side here, you can take those tabs and fold them over so they're ready to go onto this surface. And then tuck them under and push from the outside and push down with your finger from the inside. I know it's kind of hard to see because this part's blocking it, but you get the idea because we've already done this before. But I will, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll do it so that you can see it. If you want to do it the other way, where you use your table, by all means, feel free to do that. I have a finger underneath here, so as I push down, it's got something to rest against. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Okay, and that just leaves four more tabs. So let's do this one here. Let's do one at a time as we approach this curve here. There we go. It shouldn't take long. If again, if you're not able to keep up with your with my pace, chances are you're using too much glue. So just ease up on the glue a little bit. There we go. Give that a nice squeeze, and that just leaves two more tabs. I'm just going to do one at a time here. Okay. And the last one terminates perfectly right where we need it to. So you can see how accurate the engineering is on this piece. There we go. Okay, just hold that in place. I'm going to use my surface here. Okay. Looking good. And now, as I mentioned, you know, you know, because of the curve, it's not, it's not perfect. So we'll probably just take our time with this. I'm going to start with this bottom tab first. If this is kind of lifting up a little bit, just give it a push down. Bring that tab over and hold it in place. Give it a few seconds. And then we'll just work our way up. Just kind of doing one or two tabs at a time. Just make sure you're pushing it up against this surface as far as it'll go. And hold that in place. Grab the next three. One, two, three. And fold that over, push it as far as it'll go. Press down. Next one. There we go. And the next one. There we go. Okay. Looking good. Okay, just a handful of tabs left here. I'm just going to do one at a time here because of the curve again. Push that as far as it'll go. Press down and hold. There we go. A couple more. Three more, actually. Do that one. There we go. Just kind of pushing it and then just hold it with your thumb. Keep it in place. Next one. Push it as far as it'll go. Hold it with your thumb. There we go. And the last one. And that ends up perfect. And there we go. Okay. So almost done here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take and apply these pieces here just to cover that up. It's also going to make it more sturdy. And what I'd suggest doing with this is actually just applying the glue right onto the surface here, especially where the tabs are. And I'm going to go a little bit heavier with the glue here because I want to spread this out to the very edge. 
Okay, and just throw a little bit in the center there and spread that glue out to the very, very edge of all these sections so that we've got plenty of glue holding everything in place. Perfect. Grab this piece, we'll pop it right on. Make sure it's lined up as accurately as possible. We've got another piece that's going on top of this that will hide any little imperfections we may have, so don't, don't lose your mind if things don't look perfect, but for the most part, they should look great. Okay, there we go. Wipe off any excess glue. Okay, looks good. Check your little seams there. And as I mentioned, once we put this on, most of this will be pretty well hidden. So not a big deal, okay? Just take a look around the perimeter. If you do notice that you have any little gaps, just grab a scrap piece of paper, tuck it in between the two layers that maybe aren't sitting as flat as they could be. Paint a little glue in there and then just press and hold that down. Give that a chance to really set. We want it to look as seamless as possible. Okay, there we go. And I think my seams look pretty good. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the other side now. So go ahead and apply your glue. I'm just doing a nice, somewhat thick line along the perimeter. Whoops. Just a little bit in there. And spread that glue out. Try to get as much as you can out to the very edge that and if you have a little excess left on your finger just dab it onto the surface pretty much anywhere and we'll take this piece pop it right on top line it up as accurately as you can wipe off any excess glue there we go it's kind of a, a funky shape so don't don't be hard on yourself if uh, things aren't lining up perfectly. As I mentioned, kind of thought all this through and we have ways, mostly through the use of the final little panel that we're gonna put into place to hide things, hide any little imperfections. So again, don't, don't go crazy with this, okay? Now finally, with this, we have this piece here. You'll notice that there's a little score mark with the letter B. Keep the B towards the back. Okay, we're gonna use this little score mark to help us with the placement of the little black box once we get to that point. Okay, so let's just get this glued into place. Like so. Again, keep that towards the back. You'll notice that this also has some little score marks just to gently remind you that that's where it needs to go. So get that nice and centered, pop that into place. And if you need to, you can push down from the inside. Now, I'm just noticing here that I have a little gap right there that I'm going to fix because I am a little obsessive about trying to make sure that everything looks as good as it can. Obviously, these are gonna be, this one's gonna be on the website. I'm gonna be photographing this in a little bit, so gotta make it look good for you guys. Okay, all right, so that looks great. And now um, we also have a few additional panels here that we can put into place. I think we should do that now while, or before we actually put um, the sides on. So we have one here that's gonna span the entire length of this. And then we have one here. This one we're gonna need to train a little bit because of the curvature. But let's get this one going here. And then we also have a few panels that go inside as well to finish up the little purple inserts that we have. Okay, so just make sure this is centered. A nice even border on the left and the right. And it should be flush at the top. 
and then just make your way down towards the bottom. Make sure that that is all sitting nice and flush. Okay, that looks good. Now with this one here, you can see that we obviously need to kind of bend it like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is the bottom part here, I'm gonna take a little dowel and just kind of run it through like that. So you can see that's kind of curving and then I'll take the dowel this way and curve it up. And you just kind of see how that, how that works nicely. Okay, so this is a, a 3 8 inch dowel. Get a nice thick one for that. And let's apply our glue to this panel. And just like on the back, make sure it's centered. Should be flush top and bottom. I'm gonna actually start at the top. Again, make sure it's centered. Oops. There you go. I'm using my finger to kind of feel to make sure it's flush and then work my way down all the way to the bottom. And I just kind of give that an extra little press there at the bottom just to make sure it's making full contact all the way up and down. And there's a little tension there at the bottom, so be patient while that bottom part completely sets so it doesn't come pulling off prematurely here. And that looks great. Okay, uh, we're gonna do the same thing with our purple panel inside like that. That one I don't think we really need to train. Let's get our glue on this. Make sure you get a little bit of glue all the way to the very ends. Okay, and just kind of slide that in. I'm gonna do it this way. Much better with my right hand than my left. Get it centered, nice even border all the way around. And press that into place. I need to give it a little bit of a nudge. Just kind of starting at the top and then work your way down, holding it at the bottom. There we go. And then we're gonna do the same thing with that other purple panel inside where we're gonna give it that little bit of curve. Okay, so uh, at the bottom, this is gonna be the bottom, I'm gonna curve it this way so it matches that. You can see how it kind of curves in. And then over here, we'll curve it out that way. Okay, so you see how it kind of matches that shape. And let's get that in place. And that just leaves the little elements that we put together during the first step and this thing will be ready to go. Okay, so just drop that in there, whoops. There we go, nice and centered. As centered as you can get it. Don't lose any sleep if it's not perfect. This is the inside. So it's not really the end of the world if it's slightly off. I'm sure your recipient won't even notice. That worked out nicely. Hold that at the top. There we go. Okay, and it just leaves. Uh, well, actually we need to put this box in place. Okay, so this box is gonna go right here and we're gonna line it up where the little score marks are. Okay, so we do need to put a good amount of glue around the perimeter of this thing. And I'm gonna spread that glue out to the edges. When you're joining two large pieces like this, it's actually okay to use a little extra glue that's going to help keep everything in place and also keep it looking nice and seamless as well. Okay, so push it right up against where those little score marks are. Of course, you want to keep it centered. So I'm just kind of running my fingers along the two sides here, getting a feel for it. And then once that's in place, you can push down from the inside. There we go. And that's going to prevent this thing from... You know, because obviously we just have a thin little blade here holding all this up. So if you do put something heavier in here, it's not going to destroy it. It won't warp and it won't, it won't fall over, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And finally, this thing is ready to go. And you can see where we need to apply our glue. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to put glue on this entire surface. And then if you notice here, there's only a small, well, not a small, but just the middle section of the actual blade is making contact with the black part of the box. Okay, so I'm going to start, you can see this little flourish here. I'm going to start there and kind of terminate right around the middle of this little flourish. Okay, so we can get our glue on this guy here. I'm going to go a little bit thicker with the glue here so I can spread that out to the edges like that. And then before this sets, I'm just going to put some glue right here. You don't need a ton on this. Most of it's going to stay in place uh, because of this, this little section that we're gluing right now. Of course, my glue bottle doesn't want to cooperate now. Just spread that out nice and quick. Okay, try to keep it off of there. And grab this, pop that into place like so. Make sure it's all lined up as accurately as you can get it. You can actually put this down on your surface and press down from the inside. Here we go. Looking good. And you can see that I, I went a little bit too far with my glue, but that's going to dry clear, so it's not the end of the world. And the other side is going to kind of cover that up anyway. Okay, so there's that. Do the same thing on the other side. Let's get our glue flowing here along the perimeter. Somewhat thick, not overly thick. You don't want to cake it on there. Okay, and then again, just around the middle parts of the little flourishes here. I think that's good. Spread that out. And I did not get enough glue on there. Kind of move somewhat expeditiously. Wouldn't it be cool if they had like a glue that stayed wet until you like maybe shined a light on it or something to instantly cure it. Maybe someone will vent that one day. That'd be kind of cool. So that's pretty much it. You can see it's all done. Nice and sturdy, festive, very classic looking, perfect for a gift. Or as I mentioned, if you decide you want to turn this into a little floral centerpiece, you can throw a little bit of floral foam in there and grab some of our flowers from some of our other bundles. And uh, we have some evergreen um, stems. There's some poinsettias. Um, go to town with it and see what you can come up with. I think it'll look great. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed. Actually, you know what? Before I, before I forget, um, the silver part here definitely lends itself to uh, adding some red rhinestones. I think that would look really nice. And um, even on the inside here, you can throw uh, maybe some green rhinestones. Jazz it up however you want. So that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and visit us on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the little bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it. And so would the almost 40,000 dreamers that inspire us daily. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. And uh, that's gonna do it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.